right, in three, two, one. What's up, guys? And this is Berto. Thank you for stopping by this podcast segment, The Relatable and Obtainable, number 005. Today's a very special number because it's also my good friend Jordan O'Brien's birthday number. Birthday number 27, I believe. So, shouts out to Jordan. Happy birthday to that bloke. Um, if you guys know who he is, go say happy birthday to him on his uh, on his Instagram at the Joe Brian. Um, well, it was his birthday yesterday, so wish him a happy belated birthday. So, I hope you guys enjoyed yesterday's podcast. Uh, I haven't really asked anyone to subscribe to this podcast, but I'm going to do that now. Just because these are pilot podcasts I'm having a lot of fun doing. And I feel like maybe we could go somewhere together. And um, I feel like I'm getting a little bit of, of, of a positive response by you guys and uh, everyone who's been watching this. So I really appreciate you guys uh, who actually are supporting me on here. And I like this uh, podcast and I really want to make sure I'm engaging with you guys as much as possible. So uh, make sure you leave a comment and just, you know, let's engage down below. Yesterday's um the one that we just went up to yesterday actually uh, is a little bit different. I'm testing a little bit of a different try, different things. You know, I'm testing out different uh, ways, different methods of of having fun on the podcast and and, and becoming uh, a little bit more engaged with you guys and asking questions. But uh, yeah, and also just subscribe and uh, share this uh, fashion podcast with your friends and uh, your peeps. Um, I'm also want to really make. I also want to make sure that I make it a point to. You know, explore these sick fashion pages as well on Instagram, and 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 even if you have a certain amount of followers, like even if someone has a dope fashion but has like over two hundred thousand followers or whatever, like millions, I still want to make sure that I showcase that, and also the the younger ones as well. You know, younger pages, um, the ones that maybe are just starting, maybe have two hundred followers, whatever. T- to me, followers isn't what makes style. You know what I'm saying? So if you have dope style, then just let me know down below, or if you guys have any uh recommendations on on pages that you follow or you know, if you have a page yourself, let me know down below so we could um, get you on here and get other people's eyes on it as well. Um, so, yeah, speaking of eyes on on, on other things, um, I saw that there was a, uh, a little uprage, uproar on um, Bird Box, and there's a Bird Box challenge. I saw Bird Box on Netflix. I'm not really a Netflix guy, um, to be honest with you. Um, I really haven't... There was a long time. I haven't watched any episodes on Netflix when it first came out. Like, for example, Games of Thrones. I've never seen one. I've uh, never seen Games of Thor- Thrones. I've never seen uh, main, a, a lot of the stuff. The only the only things I'll tell you that I saw on Netflix are, as of recent, are is Ozark. I saw Ozark, the old episode, when it first came out. I saw Narcos, obviously. And I think I saw... What else did I see? I saw one more. I just don't remember which one it was. Um, oh, the one where the guy goes to jail, he becomes a crack addict and, and then, uh, he, he kind of has to be a, a beast in jail, he kills someone. He's like a little Indian dude. There's a burp of the podcast. Um, I forgot, I forgot what it's called a night of, but those shows are pretty cool. And, and I, I, I to me, like, I don't know, it's, you spend so much time, you give yourself, you give your time away essentially to, uh, to, to, to Netflix, to the couch, uh, being lazy, not doing much. And to me, it's always like, I, I need to get some type of return. And for me, like just being excited or, um, you know, I just really want to be stoked. Like I don't, I, I never, before then I never watched TV ever. Um, I, I did go to the movies a little bit, but you know, bird box, for example, something really dumb. I, it's a good movie, whatever it was, a series, whatever it's called. But like, I don't get it. You know, like I, at first, like I don't get it. I, the only thing I, I got from that was maybe like don't let the small things ruin your life maybe don't look so much outside of the box and, and out of your life and kind of focus on what's within and and, and 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 try to cultivate something within yourself to live a better life I think that's the only thing because like the monster thing and all that I don't really get it if you guys haven't seen it go watch it I guess if you're into Netflix and you have time but I don't know I, 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 I'm, it's not something where I was like oh this is dope and I know that it's a sad part I had the two kids in it I think if the kids weren't in the show it wouldn't necessarily be a fun show to watch I think that it was a I, it was a very emotional thing to a certain extent with the kids because no one likes to see kids get hurt and 
you know, you have more of a, you know, it's, it's like a, a thing, you know, you see little babies crying or in danger, I think as, a, as an adult or as just another human being, you're like, oh shit, a baby, something's happening with a baby or they're suffering something very traumatic and uh, going through something crazy that they don't deserve, that they don't understand. Like then you feel a little bit of sad, uh, sadness and, and, and then you start to like, okay, cool. You start to attach yourself to the, to the show a little more. Um, just because your emotions are all over the place. And and it was funny because my girlfriend actually started crying and I was just like, oh, wait, should I be crying? <laughs> you know, but should I be crying right now? But it was just like, it's it still, it was, it was something that was fun because you didn't know what was happening really. You, you, you probably, I, I, I thought I was in a like see the monster or whatever was happening. And then, you know, I think that the time just goes by so fast in the show where it's like, you know, it's happening one day and then it's just five years later and the kids are grown little fucking toddlers and you're like wait well so you did that for five years and so why are you suffering all of a sudden if you were there for five years so it doesn't really make sense timeline wise uh everything takes so much time so i feel like within five years of something happening like that for example i know it's just a show but you know i feel like you're just uh I, I think you'll you'll adapt you know you'll you'll definitely adapt you'll learn to use your senses you won't use your eyes as much but this whole bird box netflix the challenge that's going on is pretty dumb it's pretty ridiculous i just don't People are insane. I think people have way too much time in their hands. And I hope that you guys aren't doing this bird box challenge because you're going to end up getting jacked. Um, and, you know, just I, I, it's just it's just kind of dumb. You know, I, I think it's very unnecessary. And um, so I don't really believe in that show. Um, like, I don't really believe in buying Yeezys, which is perfect. Perfect. <laughs> let's let's take this little ramp right here and just do a little BMX jump. And uh, talk about the new Adidas Yeezy Boo 700s, the Interior, whatever it's called. Um, these are pretty solid. I'll put a photo up on them uh, right here on the screen so you'll see. And let me know what you guys think about these Yeezys. I feel like these are probably the most dopest Yeezys that I actually would uh, spend some money on. I like the, the first colorway was solid. I think the first one was sick. I don't know what they were called. But as far as these shoes, like it's just it, now, I mean, the crazier they get... I feel like the crazier knockoffs get, I feel like I've seen these at Zara, you know, and, and, and that's the crazy part where, I mean, people who don't know about shoes, like I'm, like I always say, like in my other podcasts, like if you're a fanatic of these shoes and, and, and you're a shoe guy, then whatever, like if you're like a, a, a sneaker head, you know, you know what you have. Um, it's like the people who drive a uh, Ferrari. You, the women don't necessarily care about Ferraris. They don't know what a Ferrari looks like. I picked up a girl one time, and I told her my Prius was a Lamborghini, and she believed it for a hot minute. And then I was like, no, it's actually a fucking Toyota Prius. So I was just like, wait, that doesn't make sense. This Prius is sexy. But, you know, it's um, it's one of those things where you don't really know unless you're involved, heavy involved in, 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 in this kind of genre. But, you know, I just feel like the, this shoe is hella sick. But I, I don't know. When I look at the shoe and I look at the Filas, for example, these Filas over here, uh, what are they, 97s or whatever? Those are solid. And I'd rather buy a fresh pair of Filas. And I know that Yeezy is Yeezy, but I think they look alike. And it's kind of funny when I saw like the... That's the reason why I didn't buy the shoe either. Because I was like, well, Fila's dope. Fila's been around for a long time. I have the Disruptors, Disruptors, disruptors whatever they're called. And, um, you know, Fila's an OG brand. You know, it's like buying a, a pair of Air Forces. You know, like they're OGs. So, to me, buying, uh, I would rather get a, a, a fresh pair of Fila's just because, I don't know, it's more nostalgic to, for me. And I think my brother had those pairs. And um, it's just, it's just, it just brings back a little bit more than just like supporting an artist who's just very insane and, and crazy. And also, I mean, if you can't afford these or if they sell out too quick, you just go to Zara. I feel like just, I, I don't know, it's just easy isn't as a hot commodity as it used to be, unfortunately. So I don't know if I would like buy these. Um, and like I said, you don't want to be caught slipping in these trends, you know, like it, it's just that's the sad part. That's the that's the part that hurts the most when, you know, you you spend money on these shoes, you buy into the hype. But then like that specific shoe, like, I, for example, if I if I buy these at Zara, uh, no one's going to be like, oh, those are damn. You got those like, you know, two years from now, they're not going to be like talking shit about my Zara Easy Boost look look alike. But they will be probably talking smack about the Yeezy Boost 700 if you have them because you're like, dude, that's old school. And like even in the comment section where I saw these shoes, like people are, are hating, you know, like, oh, Yeezy's, Yeezy's dead, you know. um, It's just, it just, there's a little bit of a, of a, of a hate towards these shoes already. So, you know, I'm just kind of like, well, <laughs> I would rather much probably get the Zara ones and just keep it cool and spend a half and not have to be so stressed out about them. And I don't even know how the resale does with these sneakers anymore um 
if you guys are sneakerheads down below, let me know if these shoes are, you know, actually have some type of conversion to them. Um, and I'm talking about conversion. I know maybe within the first week or two, if they sell out, then maybe some people are eager enough to buy them at resale cost. Um, but I'm talking about like longevity wise, like is this, a, is will, will these Yeezys actually hold a long term investment? Like I know some of them do, like the, like the, um, like the Louis Vuitton ones for sure, they hold their value, and, and, and there's some other ones that hold their value. Uh, maybe even the Pharrell uh, human race because he didn't, you know, come back with those shoes. So I think those hold their value a little bit better as well. But, you know, when it comes to Yeezy, like he even said it himself, where he just wants to create uh, a shoe brand where, and a shoe apparel brand um, company where everyone could afford it and everyone could have it. And so, you know, if he has that agenda with, uh, you know, if he has that agenda as far as the business goes, and I think that you shouldn't be too eager to shopping the, the shoe, you know, like that, it's just, it's just, it's just what it is. Um, so that's happening. And yeah, so shoes are, shoes are crazy. Shoes are a crazy thing. I think that there's, um, I think that I would definitely rather support like micro brands. Um, there's, there's another shoe brand. Uh, there's a dope like I mean actually Regato has some dope shoes as well and the new collection is super sick um, Let's see if we could we could pop this up real fast, but um if you guys don't haven't Well, if, I'm pretty sure a lot of you guys are familiar with Axel Regato because he uh, He produced a lot of the sick ass like the common project look alike those staple shoes um, but now he has um, Regato now he has like some sick sick shoes and and, and he's he knows what's up Oh God, I, I don't like this keyboard. Arigato, boom. Um, I saw I saw his um his website pop up pop up on my I can't talk today pop up on uh on my Instagram feed actually, and I was pretty surprised when I saw those shoes. I was like, dude, they're like the dad shoes, the thick sole. Uh, I think he's the last collection I saw he like doubled up his Margram sole, his cup sole, so it's a very thick, heavier, uh, a thicker shoe. A thicker sole essentially and um that was pretty sick because because i feel like right now everyone's about the the, the cup soles and they're not anymore about this the the regular uh cup sole like these old vintage artists and sneakers that we have here now they're like doubling up on these margram soles uh the cup soles which are which which is pretty sick because it gives it some uh, a, a different type of depth to the shoe and uh you could actually wear it with different things with style wise like i know that for sure like I, when i do wear baggier pants bigger bigger um like uh let's see shaman when i do wear pants that are like more oversized clothes i like to have a chunkier shoe like the the, the, the fila disruptor has a, a really good chunky it's a big ass shoe so that one looks dope with baggier clothes and i don't really want to wear a stan smith or something something too little you know um like a like a like a like a slimmer shoe um let's see what's new with this with this axel regato this dude's going crazy yo he still has his little his little sneakers his little leather sneakers but yeah he has a jesus christ yeah he has a whole bunch of stuff he has clothes now too but i would rather support something like this you know where it's like it's not too too mainstream it's not you know people see it they like it they're not judging they just look at it and like oh those are dope dude where did you get those from oh axel regato perfect and then that's it you know and there's nothing much to it, you know, and that's, that's the fucking, that's, the, that's the good thing about these little smaller micro brands because, um, hold on, let me see this other brand. Um, this brand's super sick right here. It's uh, called Casbia and, uh, they have some sick collaborations with like champion and stuff, but I've seen their shoes and they're super sick. And there's some that I'm actually considering buying because, pretty solid kicks right here casbia.com i'll show you right now um these are so these are these are sick dude um and i don't know I'm, I'm still more of a fan of of like leather shoes more than like uh these fly knit ones i, I haven't really bought any fly knit shoes i got a, a, a few pairs for free but i never really i'm not too much of a, a fan buying fly knit shoes because one like they're expensive especially if you buy off of like a a solid brand you know what i'm saying they're going to be expensive um and two i just like to me like it's very hard to um to shop for those shoes when like i know the value of what it costs to make and not to say that that's not anything in the world you know as far as business goes like anything has a, everything has a market price everything has a wholesale price everything has a you know a, 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 a very bottom line price but at the same time like when you do know that kind of 
detour detours you from like actually shopping especially myself you know you're like i'm like dude i don't know if i should i could really pay like 375 for the some um fly knit shoes whatever brands they are when i know how easy it is to make them you know when i know i've literally have samples of right here let me see see i pull them up i don't want you guys to call me a liar but no i have these samples these are all fly knits right here look this is like the little sock for adidas had this little sock thing going whatever it was called this is the shoe right here let me put the mic down real fast watch this is it right here look this was this is a shoe and all you have to do this is a shoe right here i know i think this might be like the cole han one watch this is my shoe last for vintage artisan essentially you have this right here you have this right here everyone needs one of these for sure then you have this right here and you put it on boop all you have to do is glue it then you have your little cup sole whatever you have this little sole right here put this bad boy on here assemble this thing look how easy it is a few a little bit of glue hold it down with some nails whatever let this motherfucker sit, let it dry up, and then you have yourself a sneaker. But essentially, when it comes to like these kind of working with the leathers and different things like that, like when it has more construction, there's just more assembly to it, you know, and 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 that's better for me to like just to justify what I'm paying. So I'm like, cool. So like for example, Cosby right here, these shoes are pretty sick. There's a Vaqueta MK2 Cream. These are super sick shoes. I think th these came out actually a long time ago, but I mean they're doing insane things. So. You know, when it comes to this kind of like sneaker right here, I would rather pay this price for these sneakers uh, than to buy something, um, you know, like, let's see, can we actually shop online? Like, uh, you know, these, 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 these fly knits because at the end of the day, like, yeah, they're cool. Like, these are the black ones. I think these are the Cole Haan ones. Like, Cole Haan has these, like, um, these dress shoes like this is wingtips and these are it or these might be some nike ones i don't know but literally this this is exactly what a easy whatever boot uh, whatever it is yeah the boost looks like and then they just apply it cut it and glue it and you're done and they sell it for fucking triple amounts and this is probably like uh, to be honest with you just to let you guys know a little bit about the insides of the shoes it's like i think for 250 pairs it was like a dollar each so it's like 250 dollars for 200 of those little pieces cut out pieces already just cut out for you so literally all you have to do is assemble them glue them and that's it so not fair on strike <coughs> oh it's gonna get me sick talking about them but you know so here's cosby is dope i don't, I don't i'm not sponsored by cosby um i really wish that they, they would send me some shoes for sure they have some sick ass uh some clean ass shoes right here this this man ref calf black with the, like the uh they kind of look like they're woven, but they're just, you know, it's like a basket weave. Um, I'm not sure if that's a, that's a micro knit, but that's a solid ass shoe for sure, dude. Damn. Check that out. But, um, yeah, that's it. Like, so for me, like I would rather like buy that type of shoe that doesn't have too much hype because then it just doesn't lose its value. You know what I'm saying? And, and, and it's just always going to be something that's pretty cool. Um, I feel like we're going to be talking a lot about stinkers. Um, I don't know why. I just feel like we might have to talk a lot about sneakers for sure. And a lot of you guys, um, now that you guys have money, a lot of you guys, now that you guys have money because of the holidays. That's the reason why I said it. <laughs> because you guys have, have, guys have a little bit of money. Maybe grandma gave you, slipped you a 50 or a 100. You were lucky enough to get maybe just cash and not any gifts for Christmas. But some of you guys are always asking about like entry level shoes as well. And, um, to me, like to build a wardrobe, to build a staple, to have something, you know, sustainably cool to, uh, that's going to go out with, that's going to match and go with a lot of your wardrobes are shoes for sure. And a good pair of white sh shoes will definitely take you a very long place. And I have an article that I wrote on my blog at Bar Carlos Roberto that, you know, it's titled, Not All Whites Are the Same Facts when we're talking about sneakers. Because you know, a good pair of sneakers will go with uh, trousers, they'll go with jeans, they'll go with anything. And depending on a sneaker, though, it definitely has its own kind of, you know, each shoe has its own taste. For example, the the Air Force is a more chunkier shoe. It has a little bit more of a 90s vibe. Um, it has a little bit more of the hip-hop elements to it. So I think when you're trying to dress more of a, like of a hype beast, uh, hype street, 
uh, high street fashion, oversized clothes. I think the, the the Air Force would be super sick to go with their wardrobe. It also goes pretty well with suiting as well. I love wearing Air Forces with suits. Um, I just, I've always done that. I've, I think I have some photos somewhere on my Instagram about it. But, you know, I like to take that kind of like hip hop vibe to to my classy dressing, you know, I, I, and I like to mix it up in that type of way. So, you know, a good, a good Air Force will definitely take you to that place where, 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 depending on your style, depending on the vibe you're going for, it's going to give it to you. But it also has like that, you know, that different generational kind of vibe to it that, um, it just kind of speaks in volumes, you know, and you don't necessarily have to wear it. Like people who wear Air Forces, okay, cool. This dude's like into pop culture. He's dope. Um, you know, he might be a shoe collector. I don't know. It just, it, there's a different, different type of vibe to that. Where as for example, if you dress with a, uh, like another, uh, classic shoe, which is like, like a Jack Parcel. Let me, let me actually record this right here. Um, so the Jack Parcel right here, which is, uh, Kicks number three at the bycarlsbro.com, um, at bycarlsbro.com, Carlos bycarlsbro.com. Sorry, I can't say that. But this is a more of a, um, you know, of athletic lean, like a, a leaner shoe. It's more of a, has a more of athletic vibe, um, and it's less chunky. It has more of a casual vibe. This uh, the Jack Parcel. What is this called? I forgot what this one's called. Um, but this one just looks a little bit leaner. It's more smart, smart, smart vibes, casual vibes. I think this white shoe right here will go good with like, uh, you know, if you're going to the beach or something, if you don't really like I, I, to me, like I wouldn't wear my Air Forces to the beach, to be honest with you, but I would wear this like Jack Parcel to the beach a lot easier, a lot lighter. Um, it has a canvas outlining to it, uh, has a pretty good, nice, chunky sole to it as well. Um, and it's just a little bit, it's a little bit more sleek, to be honest with you. So like with shorts, um, depending on how you dress, but like if you're just having a good time, not trying to flex, just trying to just have a good outfit on with like shorts, very minimal layers and a good minimal shoe will do, uh, this Jack Parcel will do it justice for sure. Uh, the other one is always going to be this great brand. Uh, it's just more of the modernized, uh, leather, white leather quartz sneaker and this is, goes with, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's a very classic silhouette in this day and age, uh, great does a very good job um what's the other one uh called um creative whatever the creative brand um what is it called common projects has it has these shoes and and they've definitely made a name for them um and i think this more leaner silhouette as well but it has more of a casual uh, it has more of a, of a sleeker vibe more modern vibe to it you know building a, a nice arsenal of, of of white sneakers um, will enhance your wardrobe. And even if you want to like, you know, even if you want these in solid colors and different colors, like if you want a black one or something like that, then, you know, that could definitely help you out as well. But I think that instead of buying like a, like a very, especially with white shoes, like white shoes get dirty so fast. Like for me, that's why I love white air forces because, or just like white shoes that are like un, shoes that are under like $110 because if they get messed up, they get dirty. Then you just go buy yourself a new one. It's not a big deal. You're not buying common projects that are 350, uh, you know, every six months, and that really adds up. So, oh, perfect! It stops recording by itself. That's pretty cool. Um, so you know, you guys could definitely read more about the white sneakers at, at, on my website by carlosberto.com, and you'll see it there. I have the link down below. And um, you know, I think that that like yeah, it just it, it definitely makes a difference. It doesn't hurt to shop fashion when you're buying affordable fashion, or you know what to buy and how to build a wardrobe on a nice budget. You know, what I'm saying with a nice budget. So, to me, to think and smart shop. Wait, that doesn't make sense. Think and shop smart, and then uh, it won't be too hard to buy some cool clothing. You know what I mean, boys. Um. So yeah, I mean, all in all, there you have it. There's a little bit of a of, a, of the fashion kick, a little fashion insights. Um, I'm really wondering if 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 if, uh, if what's his name, uh, Kanye West is gonna actually go on a Joe Rogan podcast. I feel like there's there's been a lot of talks about that, and I don't know. There's also like the new thing where he's not gonna do Coachella anymore because uh, he can't manage the stage, and he wants to change it up a lot so he doesn't. So he could like build his own performance, you know what I'm saying? Like he usually does. But I feel like that's pretty crazy because if I'm I'm pretty sure that if he's trying to get some crazy accommodations just to do a, a, a music festival where, you know, every artist shares a stage, 
uh, the same sta same stage, but he's just kind of um, you know trying to big time them and be like, no, nah, I need my own stage. Then I don't know what if, if if the Joe Rogan podcast might be good or bad because then he might just have his team talk to Joe Rogan about like what questions he could ask or not. Um, and you know I don't know how that how that's gonna go for sure, but it could go either he's gonna be a crazy manic dude who's just gonna be out of his mind, or he's just gonna be very nice and be like, well, I'm glad you asked that question. Um, kind of like how he was with that last interview in Chicago, which he was just super chill and mellow. Um, but you know, about the, the thing about the, listening to these kind of manic individuals or just like crazy pot, like crazy artists, like that stature where we kind of look up to or had some type of influence, um, in our lives, like for sure, Kanye, at least when I was in high school, um, the whole button up and blazer, pink shirt, pink polo with the air forces and, and, and the light wash jeans, um, definitely like I was one of those kids who dressed like that for sure with the blazer trying to act all smart and cool. And, you know, I could definitely say he influenced the way I dressed and, and, and how I saw fashion for sure. But, you know, when then you get, you get, they get to a certain point or, you know, you just kind of grow older, but things happen and, you know, they start acting out like he does in certain interviews. I, I do like to listen to what they have to say. Like, I think it's, it's pretty important to like, try to take out the good in what he's trying to say and figure it out instead of like writing him off. And I think that would just in general in life, like if you really want to disagree with someone, you have to kind of know what you want to agree on to disagree to a certain extent. Like, I, I think you have to really listen. Like, um, it's, it, it, you know, to me, it's like always, I, I don't judge like, uh, his words, based on my perspective you know like and, and have a, a a a biased opinion more of a more of a natural neutral stance on on like understanding what he's saying because you know these people are definitely like these celebrities or whoever they are even though i hate that word celebrity but these people in general are just a little bit more exposed to things that we aren't you know and so they see things differently you know like we see a struggle we always say we see a struggle we see like they don't know what it's like to to try to make ends meet or to you know not have an abundance of money to like just spend on clothes and, and po post photos on Instagram, you know, and they're probably the same way where they're like, well, you don't understand. I have all this money and I have all this power, but I don't have people who listen to me. And I think that, you know, the certain, you cannot ever take away a certain um, stress factor from an individual because of who they are, you know? And I think that it's always important to, to really try to figure out or, or um, try to listen at least where the stress factor is coming in to play at from because then you'll get a better kind of experience learning and listening to from from this individual rather than just being like this person's crazy or writing them off or being like this dude just needs attention or whatever so you know to me it's always interested to interesting to listen to these kind of people like go crazy on on air you know um it's like one of these like it's like i don't know it, it's always crazy because a lot of people want to be there they want to see you know, these kind of lights, these kind of action, this kind of like, you know, um, lifestyle. And, you know, it's just crazy how we see a lot of people that are up there, you know, living this crazy, crazy life, uh, full of luxury. And, 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 um, you know, that seems very graceful, but at the same time, we see all these people at the end of the day, like going crazy, you know, but then also, you know, we go crazy too. That's why World Star Hip Hop is such a fucking crazy uh, website with a shit ton of traffic because we like to see people that, you know, we're relating to go crazy as well, you know, to make our situation better. So I feel like, you know, you gotta, you have to understand both both sides of the spectrum, you know, to, to, to really be able to just grow and, and um, grow and, and, and really try to understand other people and other human beings, you know, and not just stay, um, tr like just try to, to be one of those people who just are like, no, I don't want to listen to them. No, I don't get it. No, he doesn't get it. No, I don't get it. No, I don't want to get it. He's just crazy. He needs attention. Um, uh, I don't get it. I don't know. You know? So yeah. So, so I'm interested in seeing, uh, if that happens or not, but that'd be kind of fun, dude. Honestly, I, I would be stoked to listen to that. So now let's go ahead and do some good and check out some dope Instagrams that I found yesterday. We're going to start off by one dude who is legit. Let me see if I could find, if I could spell his name. 
um, oh, damn, there's so many people on Instagram. Nick Lean. Okay, his name is Nicholas Ruth. He's from Germany. Nick Lino, 48K. I saw this dude's thing. I, some of my people follow him as well. Oh, I haven't recorded it. Shit. And three, two, one. Here you go. Cool. So here it is. This is uh, Nick Lino, uh, 95's fashion kid, uh, economic student, perfect man. Has a little uh, a snap me. Go ahead and I'm on Snapchat. <laughs> and uh, this dude's feed has been dope. I checked out his style. I love seeing other styles from um different countries for sure dude like i like to explore other people's feeds that are not from america or you know places i've traveled to and been to because then obviously i've kind of digested a little bit of their fashion influence and you know like i said living vicariously through someone's feed is, is probably the best thing and the, probably the best most powerful method that we could you know soak from this powerful tool called Instagram, you know, and, 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 and so I definitely love to see like the fashion out there because they definitely have an influence from other countries, from other people they visit that visit them. So, um, this dude is, is legit like this little, I mean, he kind of looks like Jordan right there, but I love the moodiness, super sick. Let's see this dude's outfit right here. Dressing dope. He has air forces right here. Boom. Good man. Has some plaid pants. Uh, nice little cashmere sweater, uh, little selfie action right here in Barcelona. Oh, damn, dude. Living life, just traveling. That's sick. Um, yeah, he has like kind of all over kind of style. He doesn't necessarily have one way of dressing in every photo, which is awesome because then you could get a lot more inspiration. Um, Calvin Klein, there you go, I did a Calvin Klein ad, this is Calvin Klein as well, isn't it, nope, ASOS, Damn, look at that little ASOS uh, bomber, or whatever that is, that little bomber jacket with the fur, there you go, dude, um, this dude's legit, has a very happy-go-lucky kind of feed, dude, honestly, it's a very friendly vibe he has going on right here, um, nothing too crazy, nothing too, you know, he's not posing insane, where you're like, okay, dude, this is like a model, dude, he's just having fun, he's kicking it, drinking his coffee at Starbucks, there you have it liking this photo what's up dude liking this photo <laughs> yeah super sick dude check this guy out right here he's legit um let's see another guy we found is y-g-a-t-t-i y-g-a-t-t-i young Gotti, dude that's a gangster ass name and he dresses like a gangster right here dude i f i saw this dude yesterday actually on uh on my explore page dope dapperness man like like just the there's a difference it, it's so crazy how like people put together um there's certain their 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 dapper looks you know like i feel like it's it's sometimes when i look at accounts um every guy who wears a suit kind of looks the same and this dude not to say that he's not the only one doing this but like this dude's dressing super dope super rad with his little look at his little uh, wool cardigan underneath his um uh, his tweed blazer casual look and i just I, I also like when i see like the 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 very dapper dudes dressing casual like I, their their definition of casual is so funny to me because it's like dude you look dapper as fuck um like casual is like this for me casual is like wearing jeans and broken adidas with fucking you know but this dude is like uh like casual vibes with a fucking tie on uh is that a double tie no he's just let it go but he has a sick ralph Lauren look that's a clean look and like I said, I, I like to put these, I like to get inspiration from these guys as well, because then when you dress up so hard like this, like this is a dope casual look right here, dude. I would definitely rock this look. Um, it's always good to kind of put your twist on it. Cause you see like what you would wear for on with this, with this, with this, uh, with this, um, with this outfit, you know? So definitely check out this dude. Dapper vibes all day. Very casual, very, um, it, he doesn't seem uncomfortable, you know, it seems like all his his very like dapper looks are very comfortable still. And I think that's the crazy part where I sometimes I see guys with um, when they wear their their dapper look and, and it's very skinny and like crazy. And, I'm, and I've had I've wore some I've have like a very skinny suit that I got from ASOS that they sent to me. Um, 
and it's a little uncomfortable because it's like a suit's supposed to be a little bit more comfortable. I feel like I feel like the the the, the skinnier they are, you feel like you're wearing jeggings, and and I don't know. Like I thought I was like this is gonna be comfortable, but it's really not. You know, it's and you have a suit on, but this dude's draped very nicely, dude. He knows what's up. He probably has a sick ass tailor. Shouts out to this dude, uh, Y G A T T I Agati. Um, yeah, and I think it's when it comes to suits and pants like this, it's just all about the drape, you know, like his pants are draped very nice to conform to his legs. Um, they're, they're not tight at all. They're just like tailored very well to him. And I think that's the key to like suiting. It's like, uh, not getting a very skinny pant, uh, not getting a very skinny blazer, but just getting things that are very tailored to you because at, at the end of the day, like a suit is supposed to conform to your body and your body only. And that's why bespoke suiting is such a big thing. Um, so when you do have, I don't know if this is all bespoke, but even like it's not because it's Massimo Duty and he's tagging other brands. But, you know, when you take it to a tailor and they do a very good job to like conforming it to your body and know how to adjust the armhole and, you know, the waist and the back and the drop. Um, that's 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 where it's at. That's where my money's at. And this dude is tailored off the hook. So shouts out to this dude. Um, so if you guys want some inspiration, go check this dude out for sure. Like these high waisted trousers he has on. Damn, I'm going to save that one. That's sick. I'm going to show it to Ryan. Um, super nice, like a very, he just knows what he's doing, dude. I feel like that's, that's, that's also what I like to f like find in these Instagrams. It's not like someone who's like a professional dresser, you know, it's like, he's not trying to sell much. He's just selling his look. And to me, that's like, that's the key right there, dude. So thank you for the inspiration. Legit dude. Two stars, two thumbs up. We have another one, the dress chest. Here you have the dress chest. I was actually fortunate enough, fortunate enough to meet this dude one time in San Francisco, or a couple of times actually at an event. So shouts out to to Rainer. And um, this dude literally just takes photos of his chest, and and I think he takes them like this every single day, different variations. I, to me, what I always find crazy is like the number of variations that he has, and like very calculated he has to know what he's doing because when you don't repeat a certain chest photo like that means your wardrobe is huge and so for me i i think it would be like the same blazer every every other every other line for sure i'd be having a sharing the same blazer or the denim jacket but this dude has like so many upper layers for sure that i don't know i, I would love to see his closet but this dude kills it with um with just with 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 just a jacket a tie and, and a shirt every time so this is a good way to just kind of get inspired to even if you do, um, for example, like if you do just want to wear, like if you do enjoy wearing like your uh, solid black pants or uh, a solid wash of, of, of denim, then, you know, if you want to change up the upper and, and just like change your upper wardrobe and, and, your, and your shirt and your blazer. And this is a good um, Instagram to go get some inspiration from because everything from the buttons of his of his. uh uh, his collar, his collars change, his uh, ties change, uh, skinny, knitted, um, a, a wider. His, I think he does. He only wear button, button down collars. Shouts out to that because I love button down, down, button down collars. But I think they're a little bit longer as well. Um, and just layering with the sweaters and the bombers. Like I, I definitely think this is a this is a, a a really good way to just kind of. Uh, get inspired without getting overwhelmed. You know, you're not necessarily looking at everything and being like, I need to buy this whole look or how can I buy it? This is more of a, of a good way to, you know, get your own uh, interpretation from and, and, and inspire inspiration from and, and go out and do it yourself and dress nice. And you still have a, a, a very sick, um, what is that called? Um, what is that thing when you go back? And you think and you you have a little uh, whatever that's called. You guys know what I'm saying. But, you know, you have uh, now that's going to kill me when I don't know that word, dude. Uh, whatever. You're going to have a little piece of inspiration to to really go back and, 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 and be like, all right, cool. This is this is how I want to get it. I think I'm close enough, but I have my own edge and my own style um, uh, added to this to this uh, piece of inspiration. And, and that's what I'm going to go for. So this dude's legit. Go check out the dress chest. Shouts out to this guy for taking pictures of his chest every day and creating new looks. I can't imagine how much money he spends on just his chest, dude. Uh, what is this? Gabrielle Cohen. This dude is a beast as well. I feel like everyone is. Gabriel.
what is it? What is this dude's name? Gabriel Cohen. Gabriel Cohen. Right here. Boom. Gabriel Cohen. And this dude is, uh, where's this dude from? From Sweden. I saw this dude's Instagram. This thing is legit, man. Honestly, I like his, uh, his style. I like his looks. Uh, check that out. He has a little New Year's Eve. Obviously, went went all out with the with the velvet blazer. Um, beast, man. I like the mixture of 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 clothing of clothing he wears. Um, well, I got out of that. Um, very dapper. Uh, very Italian inspired dapper blazers. Um, wide peak lapels. Um, very Italian with even the the little vest and 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 the knit and the hat. Um doing it right you know sometimes i look at these vests and i'm like i can't pull these off and sometimes you look at pieces like this that are like almost like old man again old people wear it you know and then you're like ah, oh, this looks too grandfather like but then when you know how to dress it you know how to dress it even in this look right here more of a of a baggier loose fitting trouser um you know there's definitely options when it comes to fashion it's not like just because everyone's wearing skinny pants or skinny trousers or you know over oversized ones that's the way it should be so you know finding your own medium and and, and what you're comfortable with rocking is very important and that's what you get with these with these looks especially when you're looking at places like this guy's from sweden i'm pretty sure like the fashion out there is insane so you know they have different inspiration and for you to pick up on that it's it's, it's pretty awesome um very dapper look brown this is a sick brown uh cashmere Whoa. Little damn little get up dude with the little brown turtleneck too. This is legit. I'm gonna save this one for sure. Um yeah, this dude's super dapper, easy going, not a crazy consistency throughout his Instagram as far as mood, but uh very easy to kind of continue to scroll down. Um kind of excites you to see what the next look at these yellow shoes for sure, dude. Those bobbies, nope. Uh, you know, when these come when it comes to these type of feeds, it's like it's a little more exciting because then you're like excited to actually like explore the page. It's not like, you know, oh, what's next? Or like, dude, this photo is sick. That dude's a legend for that one, dude. Parcells hype. Where's that shirt from? Yeah, so it's like a this this feed is sick, dude. Go check this dude out. You guys are definitely getting inspired by it. Um, shouts out to this dude. Let's collaborate. Let's do something, bro. Um, next one. Let's see one more guy. This dude, uh, Jamie. His name is Jorge Membrio, J M B R, whatever you see it right here. Um, I saw this photo right here, uh, of him in his car. That looks super sick. But more importantly, I like the uh, the consistency of his of his feed. He has cars. Uh, I, to me, like having a consistent feed isn't all about fashion. So I like when they, uh, you know, put out some. Who's barking and who's here? Um, he has a lot of car photos and that's what I liked about his, his feed. So like for me, when you have a consistent feed, it's very easy to kind of keep a, a, a moody, consistent feed when you're in control of, you know, the dynamic of the photo where you're like, okay, I need to go get a photo around this time or around this area with this background because it's going to go with my outfit and it's going to be a consistent mood throughout my figure, throughout my Instagram profile. But when you mess with like having different things, different concepts like the cars and buildings and architecture, um, and you're and you're playing with it with and you're you're putting that into your feed uh, and allowing that to like break the feed down a little bit more uh, with just with more than just a look or a fashion uh, statement, then that's pretty awesome too. Like the Porsche perfect picture. I don't know if he found it online or if he um, actually took a photo of this, but. I like the whole car vibe too. Like it, it, it's still integrated in this feed very well. Um, and it breaks it up just enough so that you could like continue to look at what other car he's found. Because obviously, as you guys know, with my feed, I'm a big car enthusiast. Um, and his feed looks hella fun as well. And he's doing things and having fun. Um, pretty consistent, nice color, uh, makes it up a little bit. I feel like he's found his vibe right now, but you know, overall, uh, very solid feed. So shouts out to this dude. Go check him out. Um, if you guys are interested in getting some sick style inspiration. Let's see. What else do we have? I think that's it, man. That is it for right now. Um, so there you guys have it. Shouts out to this dude. Let's see what time. What, what's our time? Uh, 
45 minutes um cool yeah guys so that's i think that's gonna wrap up for today's uh for today's uh podcast zero zero five i hope you guys have been enjoying this uh this little journey with me um and hope to have you guys on board for the upcoming ones um if you guys like this please help out a lot uh just lets me know that you guys are interested in into uh these podcasts which is gonna then just kind of keep me a little bit more motivated even though i'm still self-motivated but it just always helps for you guys especially my young spades out there uh holler if you hear me uh check out my podcast um and show some love down below in the comment section uh if you have any questions or like i said feel free to give me some instagram recommendations or if you guys even want me to check out a, a latest fashion trend or talk about it, i think we covered a lot today um kind of went by really fast i kind of blacked out i'm actually I, I literally literally just came back to life right now so whatever i said i didn't mean sorry guys um and uh yeah i hope you guys enjoy this podcast so thank you guys don't forget to share like and subscribe and let your friends know that there's a fashion podcast by carlos roberto in this youtube thing and i will also try to get these podcasts in um itunes and spotify and shopify and all that stuff but i just really wanted like to make sure this test pilot's going well and just seeing the kind of uh feedback i'm getting from you guys and and and, and you know then i'll take it to the next level but for sure thank you guys for listening i really appreciate you guys uh being on here and listening 45 minutes if you guys have been here the whole entire time um maybe what you should do is just i don't know i'm not gonna tell you guys to do anything I'm sorry, guys. I'm not going to dictate your life. But, uh, yeah, thank you guys for stopping by. I hope you guys enjoy this podcast. And I'm out of here because I got to edit this thing to go up tomorrow today. And cut.